soon as it's over. Your phone rings, and what they say is, you will die in seven days. And exactly seven days later. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the podcaster, one of the podcasters of The Haunting Season, as well as photographer, filmmaker, amazing TikToker, and all-around great guy, Joshua Bragg. Josh, how you doing today, man? Hey, I'm doing great. This is uh, the best part of my day so far. Hey, legit, me too, man. Not only seeing you, but seeing that amazing thing poster right there has got me all types of amped up, man. Um, so, Josh, for people that don't know you, uh, what can you tell us a little bit about Haunting Season and some of the other things that you've been up to? Yeah, Haunting Season is this uh, community I'm building of you know people who are interested in horror and the deeper subjects behind you know, why the characters do the things they do and why we love it so much and why we connect to it so much. So it started out in 2013 as a YouTube show. Um, Creepypasta was just starting to become a thing. And so I decided to take my own stab at writing my own scary stories and um, added my own 360 degree soundscape and music uh, to kind of make it like a movie. But then you're just like watching me tell the story kind of campfire style. And I did that for two years. And I got super burnt out because I was doing it every single week, um, which is a lot of output. And uh, I had a couple of years where I couldn't do it and moved across the country. A bunch of things changed in my life. Got my dream job at a production company. And um, they helped me bring it back this past October. And with it, launched a podcast version and uh, a TikTok version, which are all kind of different. So the podcast is like deeper dives into the stories and also like films that we love. And the TikTok is mostly horror movie reviews and just stuff I'm excited about. Well, you guys don't have to wait for me to tell you about all this, because to be honest with you, I got all the links right down here in the description just for your convenience. So I highly suggest you click these down here. Give him a follow. I was so excited. Um, Kobe hooked us up together. It was really awesome. Um, so I'm very excited that we are able to do this. But the reason we're here today, man, we know what you're doing right now. Do you have anything coming up in the future that you can, I know sometimes things stay under wraps, but is there anything you can tell us that you got coming up in the future that you're working on? Um, no, I mean, as of right now, I'm flying by the seat of my pants for the most part. I have some interesting stories that I'm writing, but, uh, you know, as a creative person, you, you never really know how long they're going to take. Um, I, I do have these like strong feelings that Halloween needs to be special this year somehow. I just don't know how yet, but there's going to probably be some uptick in content, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And man, I'm so excited to see what you have for us because I love the stories that you have. I can't wait for you guys to check it out and follow him on social media as well. So you can check this out. Make sure you're liking the podcast. But my friend, the reason we're here is to talk about the first horror movie you watched. Obviously, you do a lot of writing. You do a lot of talking about horror. But that always has to start somewhere. So let's take it back to the past. And your first horror movie was? The Ring. And I've said this before, and I will say it again, probably on a future podcast. This is in my top three favorite PG-13 horror movies of all time. When you watch this movie, you forget it's PG-13 because this is a genuinely scary movie. Um, now, I should have asked you before we started, Josh, do you prefer Josh or Joshua? Oh, Josh is fine. I even have had people call me schwa at times in my life. So I'm, I'm just to reverse it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, I don't want to keep calling you Josh and disrespecting you. So no, I appreciate that. I know it's that, cool. Man. I'll stick with it. Um, how old were you the first time you've seen The Ring, Josh? I saw it in the theater. So that was, I think, probably my freshman year of high school. So man, whatever age that is, like 15, 16. I'm so happy. I, I did as well. So I'm glad that you got to experience this in the theater because people that didn't see this in the theater, I don't think they really totally understand or grasp how truly amazing the sound effects and score to this movie are to go along with the film. Um, and when you hear this in that surround sound type of environment and you hear all the loud noises and everything that goes along with this film, I feel like it really enhances the product. So, um, yeah. And I would say the cinematography too, like I, I just rewatched this, you know, leading up to this conversation and I had forgotten how beautifully it's shot. There are these like long helicopter shots that like wrap around houses and like all the stuff on the, um on the ship and everything it's just like really every frame of that movie was really artfully crafted almost like a painting at times and you're right that's the thing about this movie that i think and i think a lot of the younger generation doesn't find this movie as scary because they didn't grow up watching vhs tapes like us and that's not a stab at anybody and that's not slamming anybody um but they'll never know how hard it was 
to try to find a piece of tape to put over the end of your VHS so you could record what was coming on TV next after someone had broken the tab off. So it definitely, I think, enhances it for us because we grew up with these VHS tapes. That made it a little scarier for us. Um, now, you said you went to see it in the theater. Do you remember who you were with when you went and seen it? I don't remember who I was with, but um, what I do remember is it was everybody. Like, yeah. what I remember from back then is you would just go to the movies and know that you're going to meet up with people because it's opening night of a movie. And sure. there's no assigned seats. They're just these, like, wooden uh, folding down with, like, you know, some padding on it. But super dirty and creaky. And everyone's packed in shoulder to shoulder. And there's no <laughs> better way to watch a horror movie than shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of hyped up 16-year-olds on sugar and adrenaline. <sighs> Which is funny. I, I would agree with you if I was 16. But now that I'm a 35 year old cynical asshole, I get so pissed at the kids at the movie. I'm no way, guy. man. No <laughs> way. I disagree because I went and saw Old uh, the weekend it came out. And if it had not been for a bunch of drunk 16 year olds, I would have not had a blast. That movie was so much fun with everyone riffing on it and joking around and then screaming. Um, if I had seen it by myself in an empty theater, I, I don't think I would have enjoyed it, the experience at all. See, and I, I'm with you on old. Um, I know it's kind of off topic, but um, it, was a, it was a good enough movie. It was a really shitty M. Night Shyamalan movie, in my opinion. Um, I'm a big M. Night yeah. Shyamalan fan, and this is more towards the bottom of his filmography, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, but it, I, well, and I guess it's fair. Like, a, a rowdy audience like that wouldn't have been right for hereditary but like when i saw snakes on a sure. plane and people were throwing popcorn and like stepping over each other on the seats and sitting on each other's laps like that movie should never be seen with less than 100 people right well yeah and you're right because that's a movie that, you, that that movie was made to have fun i remember they went back and recut part of the movie to put in sam jackson saying i've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane just to please the internet like that's how great that movie is some <laughs> back then some internet meme and i don't even know if meme was the term back then took hold of samuel jackson saying that and they went back and reshot that for the film so snakes on a plane will always have my love and respect just for that alone and i, I love the fact that i'm like do you remember who you went and seen it with you're like no those fucking losers i don't remember a thing about them <laughs> <laughs> it was everybody. It just like everybody it was like the whole I, I grew up in a town that had like a, you know, a school over here, a high school over there and a high school over there because the town was so big. And it was just like the match. That's where everybody met was the movie theater. And there was like a burger joint there. And it was like, I don't know, it's just like you would go on a Friday night and there would just be like uh, your parents probably had a nightmare picking you up because the parking lot was just filled with like kids skateboarding. And I remember like climbing up the sides of the building towards the roof like it was a mess it was a total disaster i don't know how that movie theater is still like standing <laughs> that's amazing though man like those are the things like those nostalgic moments that is why i think movies are so special to us it's not just because of what we're seeing on the screen but you talk about the ring and you're automatically transported back to skateboarding out in the parking lot you know, like things like that, like the memories that come along with the films that we watch, I think is super important, especially in the horror world. I think horror has the hardest fan base um, that goes all out. Like I was talking earlier, sci-fi is close, but you don't get rom-com con. You don't get people dressing up like Ryan Gosling and going and, you know, walking around a convention center. You know, <laughs> like that's what you get with horror because we all love it so damn much. And um, you know, like the rain really started in the United States, a whole new genre of horror with that Japanese horror coming over here to the States. So in a movie that has so many scenes that are so gnarly, what would you say, Josh, was the scene that affected you the most from the ring? Well, you know, I mentioned I rewatched it. And so as a kid, the scene with the horse was really it for me because I, I was afraid of horses. There, there's something about the way that they're built that just like terrifies me. Um, their eyes are super dark and soulful. Um, and it's weird when an animal feels like something more than an animal, you know, and um, they're, they're just big and they have these long faces. So I was already afraid of horses. And then you get this horse ripping itself out of its harness uh, and like beating its way out of the, um, you know, thing that's in and then they're on the 
what's it called? Ferry. They're on the ferry and then yeah, like the ferry. charging Rachel, you know, and you have those shots and then it gets, you know, it jumps and you don't want animals to get hurt either. So now you're afraid of it, but you're also like, oh, and then it gets hurt, you know, and clips the edge and falls into the water and then just the blood coming out the back and the, the moment like waiting for that, that for me, just like it had so many elements of just awfulness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that really stuck with me. But as an adult, it's completely different. Like what scares me now is the whole technology side of it, which I kind of like was like, oh, that's a cool trick when I was a kid. But now like I edit video for a living. I take photos for a living. And the idea right. that they're they're coming to life on their own and have their own like soul kind of is like really freaky. Yeah. And it's something else I've talked about. Like you're talking about that and Something I always think about when I think about The Ring, funny enough, is Scary Movie. And I feel like with Scary Movie 2, I mean, it was either 2 or 3, they really, really went in on The Ring and The Grudge. And like what Scream was for Scary Movie, that's what The Ring was for Scary Movie 3. It was 2 because, yeah, 2 was in the Haunted Mansion. And they always say, you know, um, imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery. They really, really bit on the ring and the grudge with that la that last scary movie part three of the last one that I got into. But another thing about that, Kurt Cobain, one of my favorite quotes of all time was he said that he knew that Nirvana made it when Weird Al called him to make a parody. Like that's when he knew they were doing something. So that's to me when you watch these movies like The Ring that is so terrifying, but it's been bitten like that. I think that's so amazing, and that's actually what leads me to my next question. When you think about The Ring. What is the first thing that pops into your head? Well, the the very first thing that pops into my head is when I bought the DVD because I don't I don't know like I don't know how much of this is my own legend that has just like manifested over years like if the memory's all corrupt or whatever. But um I remember um getting the DVD and being excited to share it with other people who missed it in the theater and when you popped in the DVD it would play the rings movie like the vhs tape it would just play that and then it would eject and th the first time that happened scared the living daylights out of me because like i've watched <laughs> the movie i know the ending i know how to make a copy of a vhs tape how do you make a copy <laughs> of a dvd fuck i'm screwed you know and like it was really scary but then you know it was like right around the time my parents got a cell phone and so i would borrow it when i was not home so i could like call home for a ride so i'd program the, the house phone of the person who I was trying to show the movie to. And then we pop it in new DVD player. It would pull the same trick. And then I would call their phone and totally freak them out. And half the people wouldn't watch the movie after that. Right. Okay. Hey, you know how to scare the shit out of you? Now let's actually watch it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, and they so did such a good job. Cause I, I recently watched um, Ringu for the first time. I've always yeah. wanted to, but I never like pulled the trigger on it until like maybe two weeks ago. And I like the, um, I think I like everything about the American version better, except for how, is her name Samara? How, how the girl Samara. looks. Samara. Yeah. Um, I, I like how she looks better in the Japanese version, but the rest of the storytelling and especially the, like the, the short film, uh, the, the college student short film, that yeah. is the scary thing, um, has like a few more elements to it that are like even creepier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think it's that's one of those things where the people I think that watched Ringu first dig that one more, and the people that watched The Ring first dig that one more. I just feel like that's how it is in our psyche, you know. Like even with horror movie remakes, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I didn't like the remake as much as the original." But it's like, man, if you would have switched them around, maybe you would have liked the remake more than the original. You just had set a bar for yourself up there, and that's yeah. how we are as human beings. Um, so we talked about which scene affected you the most, Josh. But now I want to go a little bit different here. What would you say your favorite scene from The Ring is? Hmm. Um, I think. I think it's. I think it's when they find the well, like that whole sequence there, where they're like they drop the marbles and they rip up the floorboards, and the TV mm -hmm. falls and knocks her into the well, and then she finds the girl and has the flashback. That I get like. 
feelings when that happens. I'm not just watching a scary movie anymore. I'm like fully invested of like, oh shit, like this is real. It's not just like this weird thing that's happening. Like that's when the emotional hit happens for me. And then everything after that is so artful in the way that they, you know, I hadn't seen Sixth Sense um, when I saw The Ring because this is my first horror movie. So I n- had sure. never experienced a twist like that where you're like, oh, everything is good. We figured out the what? He still dies? Yeah. She, she never sleeps, Rachel. She, like that when the sun does that, dude, still to this day, I'm like, fuck, that's scary, man. Like, and she pulls his right. sleeve back and he's got the handprint. And you're like, no. Yes, dude. And I think people that haven't seen this in a while forget how, how crazy that twist was. Because throughout the whole movie, we're expecting, you know, she finds the body. It's over. That's how we're going to end the movie because we're in a world of happy endings. And then when the kid's like, you let her out you are supposed to let her out. She, she never sleeps, Rachel. And then his nose starts bleeding. He was like, ah! like that's such a scary scene, man. Um, so here's where we get a little dark, Josh. We talked about your favorite scene and which scene affected you the most. But as horror fans, we love the kills. So in the ring, the kills are few and far between, but each is very effective. What kill would you say stuck with you the most? I hate saying your favorite kill, but which one would you say was cinematically the best one for you? It's the suicide. It's the dad in the bathtub. Um, And I I count that as a kill because it is all uh, this emotional weight that has been on his mind for, you know, it's the last straw. It's she is finally killing him. Um, Dude, that with the water on the floor and she steps in it and then, you know, it takes a step back realizing what's about to happen. And the even just like the look of the the horse reins that he has, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever the horse bit. Like everything about it is, and then there's so much technology that he is and it all like piles over. It's just so over the top. And this whole time you just get this, like open the closet door or spin the chair around. And this is like the most terrifying, hugest moment, I think in the whole movie. And, and something that you brought up here, this is one of only two scenes in the whole movie that includes blood. You have the horse on the boat. And then here you get a little bit of blood there in the bathtub. And I think it's chilling right before then when he's like, we weren't supposed to have a daughter. You know, mm. like the guy's like, I swear to God, the next guy that's had shenanigans, I'm going to pistol whip. We weren't supposed to have a daughter. You know, like that's all I can see now when I see him is the guy from Super Troopers. But when, when you watch that part of him and you see, like you said, that true weight on his shoulders and he just can't, he's finally broken, you know. Well, and that's the genius, that's the genius of this movie is like, or that's when it dawned on me that this film is about how emotional pain and suffering are way more terrifying than just a little ghost. You know, it's, it's that weight of like mental wellness and, and struggling with depression and like all that stuff. That's way, way, way more scary than her being like seven days. Right. And it's absolutely a lot more. Did she ever actually do that? Like, that's the legend yeah. they tell you in the beginning, but Rachel's always like, nope, hanging up the phone. Well, I mean, she, she does the first time she calls Rachel, Oh, okay. you know, she says it. And then I don't think after that, I don't think she says it to the little boy. I think the little boy grabs the phone and then Rachel grabs it. And is like, you can't fucking have him. You know, and then she's doing her crying thing, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> Just oh, love so. all the time. She's like, nope, sorry. <laughs> Nobody's home. R- R- new phone, who this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> So, Josh, man, and I love talking about The Ring. Again, this is a movie that I, I do great and I greatly enjoy. Um, but we talked about your first horror movie being The Ring and how that movie affected you. So now I got to go a little bit scream on you here, my friend. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, I hate answering this question. Um, so, and you it- know what? I've said this on the podcast before. I never tell my guests. And I'm going to ask this question because I always, I don't want you to think about it beforehand. I want you to just say it off the fucking on the fly. So what would you say your favorite horror movie is? I mean, I think I, I think I have to say it's the thing because I have two posters of the thing in my office. I have the original one and then I have like an artful one over there. And that's the movie that like, you know, if the ring introduced me to horror and, and, the focus for me was like, what an incredible story. The thing introduced me to horror in a way that made me go like, oh oh shit, this is like, this is the real stuff. This is like, I I didn't know that existed. 
J- just for clarification, I'm sure everybody knows, but I just want to clarify. We're talking about the 2011 prequel, right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's funny because the thing for me is a movie that I enjoy. I enjoy <laughs> so, you know, um, I enjoy the thing. I think it's a great movie. But what I can say about the thing is it's in my personal top three best practical effects movies of all time. To me, it's the thing, the original Nightmare on Elm Street and American Werewolf in London to me are the three best practical effect movies in horror that I've ever seen. And I think that um, I wish that we could get a thing 2011 practical cut because I know that they filmed a lot of that practical the studio stepped in and shit on it with the CGI. And I'm not against CGI. I think if you use it correctly, it can be done very well. But in this instance, I think that you look at the difference between The Thing 2011 and John Carpenter's The Thing, and you can see a huge difference in quality between practical and CGI. So I completely agree with you, and I applaud that answer because The Thing is an amazing movie that I think really – everybody, when they talk about John Carpenter, it's always John Carpenter's Halloween. It's always Christine. The Thing doesn't get brought up as much because I don't feel it's as mainstream of a movie as those others. But I would go as far as to say that it's his best film that he's ever made was the thing i the score the acting the story the effects everything about that movie is as close to perfect as you could possibly be what's really special about it for me is i have seen it both on a 13 inch you know vsr vhs attached um screen and i've seen Mm -hmm. it in the movie theater and with a huge you know rowdy audience and it is exactly the same movie Like it is just as scary tiny as it is big. It is just as scary on one speaker as it is in surround sound. Like it just is the thing just is. And it I'm, I'm with you. I love that film so much, Josh, this has been amazing. I have one last question for you before we sign off. My friend, we're going back to the ring and we are going to give this a skull count zero skulls being the worst five being the best now i know what you do for a living and that's not what we're doing here we're not critiquing this movie on acting we're not doing it on score production direction editing this is strictly on what this movie means to you and how much this movie affected you so zero being the worst and five skulls being the best you can use half and quarter skulls what would your ranking of the ring be so uh, when you asked me what my favorite movie was and I went, ah, oh, crap, it's because I kind of have five movies that all have this top five rating for me. And it's uh, The Ring, it's The Thing, it's Poltergeist, it's Signs. Okay, there's four. Um, <laughs> so there's like the all of those. And so The Ring, it, like it, it kind of from time to time shifts to my favorite movie. So it's five. It's five skulls sure. for me. And I am so happy for the fact that you just said Signs because I feel like that's one of the most underrated horror movies. Um, There's so much about that movie that's suspenseful and horrific. And people, oh, water killed the aliens. Well, they're not human, dude. So that's absolutely, absolutely believable. How many planets do you know with water on them? Yeah. (laughs) Dude, and it's funny. I'm not trying to plug myself right now, but I just recently did a top 10 horror movies that made me cry. And Signs was on there. You know, when Mel Gibson's holding the sun at the end and he's like, the poison didn't get in. It didn't get in. You know, like, that's fucking heartbreaking. And then when he takes that dad and they all break down crying, you're like, Mm -hmm. oh, my God. Like, it's so, so great. Such a fun. Yeah. Yeah. And part of the reason, too, and and this is why it was so disappointing for old, um, you know, is that M. Night took Mel Gibson aside. And in the behind the scenes, you can hear Mel Gibson talk about this. And, like, in his ear on, like, a first or second day of filming was like, dude, quit phoning it in. You're better than this. You're fucking Mel Gibson. Like, give me something. And it changed, it changed him because he was playing Mel Gibson. And then he was like, I guess I have to actually work on this movie because this director is telling me to. And the the guy was like 20 something years old. I just, I just, oh, I love that movie so much. And the balls, because I mean, in M. Night Shyamalan's hat, you know, you, before that he had Bruce Willis from Unbreakable in the Sixth Sense. You know that he's, you know, I've worked with Bruce Willis, man. I know how to do this shit. Listen, I, I picked you. I need you to kill this for me. And he ended up doing that. Signs is a fantastic movie that I enjoy very, very much. Yeah. So, Josh, don't go anywhere, man. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, I want to throw this reminder out there. His links are down here in the description. So make sure you're not only checking out his social media and following him. Make sure you're also checking out the podcast and the YouTube channel. Show him some love because the guy works his ass off to do what he does. So until next time, guys, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.